Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the Stock Market Outlook video brought to you by DeepView. Uh, today we're going to, as usual, dive into the indexes, a few key stocks that I'm watching, and I'll give my overall take on the health of the market, which uh, newsflash isn't great uh, at the moment. And let's go ahead and you know first bring up the QQQ here and take a look at this chart. So um, pretty much I've been negative on the market since this day right here. I posted about it in, in my newsletter, which we linked down below. Um, and this day where we kind of failed this breakout, uh, very negative reversal here, we tried to push higher, you know, close below this low, below all these lows and below the 21 EMA, that's kind of key here, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, this to me kind of started the short-term down cycle. If we look at this overall setup, we have been basing, we found support at this key level, upside reversal, pushed higher, a uh, negative day here, some distribution coming in, uh, but we managed to hold this level push higher again. This was a short-term run, which then was pulling back into the moving averages, the confluence of the 50-day moving average, the 21 EMA, as well as the high of this day and this day. And then we were looking to push higher from this level. And then this is where kind of the expectation breaker concept comes in, where this day is just a clear uh, negative day, similar to this day. Um, but, you know, just again, Got to be on short term, um, you know, on on watch here after a day like this. And we try to hold here this short term level. We have two upside reversal days. And then this reconfirmation down is really where a lot of growth stocks uh, continue to see distribution come in. And even into the end of the week, as we'll bring up, uh, for instance, Tesla on Friday, that's when it really kind of broke down. So uh, at the moment, we're just kind of back in some chop corrective phase. Um, you know, nothing to freak out about just because it's a normal part of the market cycle. Uh, there has to be basing periods and choppy periods to set up the nice uptrends like we saw back here. But just for me, for my time frame, swing trading, position trading, uh, there's nothing much to do. Um, if you've been playing to the short side, there's been some great entries, you know, on this day, as well as this green confirmation down. It's not personally my uh, preferred style. Uh, but, you know, at this moment, we're short-term extend to the downside. Uh, we're at a key level. It's likely not the best time to be putting on new shorts. Uh, the best risk reward is probably, you know, on these two days. But I could definitely envision a short-term rally off this level back into the declining moving averages. And then if we rebound down from that, that could be another good risk reward spot to put on uh, some shorts if that is your style. Uh, for me, I'm more just kind of taking a step back, um, you know, doing other productive things, rewriting trading rules, um, you know, working on the DFU platform itself um, and just kind of waiting, watching for relative strength, waiting for this process to uh, work itself out. Um, and, uh, you know, another uptrend will come like this. We just have to be patient and wait for the stocks and uh, everything to set up as we like it. Um, so that's pretty much it for uh, the QQQ. Uh, you know, the 21 EMA, I think, is a really amazing gauge. If you just focus to the long side when we're above a rising 21 EMA, you'll do tremendously well. And then when we start undercutting that, uh, you can see we go through a more extensive basing period. We pop above it here, get rejected, then move above it again, have a few days of, of strong action. Um, and now we're back below a declining 21 EMA. So in a short term down cycle as of this moment. So nothing much to do here. Um, you know, we've been basing pretty much since uh, July 19th. We're at a key level. We'll see how it responds versus that level. I'll be watching for relative strength, stocks that are holding up well. Uh, I've got a list of stocks that we'll go through a few later on today. Uh, but for me, you know, pretty much on the sidelines here, uh, just waiting for uh, my spot, my sweet spot to appear again. Uh, bring up the IWO. I like watching this index as well because it gives a better sense of how uh, smaller caps are doing. And I've been noting the weakness here for quite some time. Uh, first of all, it was a lot weaker during this period than the mega caps. We rallied off the 200 day moving average. This is when there was a short term, you know, moment of opportunity here. And then we, you know, were rejected off the declining or flattening 50 day moving average. And since then, we've just been a lot weaker than the QQQ, you know, the bigger cap. Uh, names. Uh, we formed a short-term range here, broke below this level on this day, as well as this day, broke below the 200 day and, you know, finished the week right at lows. So um, again, nothing much to do from this perspective. We could form out a double bottom here, uh, but we have to see some strength here uh, to before that happens. If we do rally into the 200 day moving average, that could be an, a potential area 
of resistance, as well as that would line up with the declining 21 EMA if that happens sometime next week. So something to look out for again. Uh, but again, you know, just these two key indexes give you a great sense of, you know, are we risk on like here trending above the moving average or are we risk off below declining moving averages? That's pretty much as simple as you need to keep it. And as of the moment, uh, nothing great doing here. Bringing up some key stocks, let's talk about Tesla here. Uh, we were acting great, you know, nice move up here, forming a range, some negative action. We couldn't quite push higher. Uh, this day, we got rejected down close near lows. There's this key level, which we broke below on Thursday. And then Friday, again, just kind of reconfirmed to the downside below the 50 day, below the 21 EMA and uh, nothing much to do here. Uh, but just wait for a potential double bottom. You know, this is an area of interest. Uh, you know, we're at a key level right here, a short term key level. And we're also, you know, kind of one, you know, basically five out of the last six days down. So a little bit short term extend to the downside going into this level. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, some type of rally uh, into the moving averages and, and then meet some resistance here. But we'll have to see, wait and see what happens from range here. And then we either break higher or break lower. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, bring up Amazon. This is also negative. We had a failed breakout, which you know has has been down most of the last few days. Again, last week pretty much closing at lows. Uh, let's bring up Apple. This is also you know just forming out a base. We're at a key level, so this is pretty um, you know this is pretty weak here. So again, this hasn't you know it's forming a key level here, potential short opportunity versus that level. If we do break lower. Um, but, you know, given the overall context of everything, uh, just watching here also could have, you know, some upside reversal action versus that level, similar to what happened this day. So definitely be careful if you are shorting. Remember, it's a quicker game. Got to take your profits a little bit faster and uh, make sure you're managing your risk. And don't short if you uh, don't feel completely comfortable doing, doing it and have seen success in your account while doing it. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, from there. Um, also bring it up. Let's bring up Meta. Uh, this again uh, got that key level that I've got marked here. I've got an alert set um, at this level, um, and I'll actually reset it here again. There we go. So I've got alert set here for that breakdown. We'll see what happens. Rallying into those moving averages from the downside. A little bit choppy price action here, and not the best look. But again, if it does firm out, if the market firms out, this could push higher from here. Uh, but given how the rest of stuff is doing, uh, it's not too likely here. Uh, NVIDIA, bringing that up. Uh, this, you know, has been showing weakness since it broke down through this base pivot. The semiconductors as a theme, as a whole, haven't been acting super great. And um, yeah, overall, just not the best look here. And we're below declining 21 EMA, below the declining 50 SMA, approaching this prior base pivot. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens um, at this time, but uh, again, just in a short term down cycle, approaching a significant potential uh, support zone. So that's pretty much it when it comes to, you know, the, the key indexes as well as some key stocks here. Um, not the best look, just looks like corrective action. But again, this is part of the game. This is what sets up the great opportunities. So let's go ahead and X out of this and run through a few names here that have an interesting ACAM. Um, you know, holding up tight, you know, anything holding the 21 EMA at this point, holding last week's lows, you know, a week a week ago um, is acting pretty good. So just keep note of that. Build your RS list every single day. You can get more information um, and that way you're prepared when that next, you know, uptrend finally does resolve itself. Uh, in terms of overall groups that are acting well, uh, you know, still some software stocks are holding up there. Um, insurance is acting well. Um, oil and gas, biopharma. Uh, Amgen's been acting pretty well and, and holding up decently. Um, you know, uh, ESTC in the software space is probably one of the strongest out there. Uh, but, you know, there's no super clear leading group in the growth space at this moment. And a lot of stocks have gotten hit uh, pretty hard. You know, IoT was a name a lot of people, myself included, were watching pretty closely. And this has gotten hit really darn hard and is approaching the base lows again. So, Again, some of these are short-term extents. The downside doesn't mean they can't continue lower. Uh, just means, you know, if, if you're on the short side, uh, you got to be more careful um, and just pick your spots a little bit more carefully. So uh, let's go back here to see if there's any other names I really want to highlight. Duolingo, another one that I was watching here and, and my chart previously was in extended hours mode. I was testing that out. 
Um, but, you know, just getting choppier, you know, gaps. Uh, for me, I trade a lot better when ranges tighten and uh, there's kind of some rhyme and reason between gap ups, gap downs. And we'll have to see what happens next week if we can get that tightening. So uh, I'm not sure if there's any other names I really want to highlight here. Uh, these were just a list of stocks that uh, caught my eye overall. Some of them are holding up okay. You know, VRT is still up there. You know, it's leaking a little bit below the 21 EMA. Um, Uber just watching it versus the lows of the space. Um, Spotify holding up all right. But none of these look primed. They, they're not my ideal setup. So these are just kind of overall watch lists. And I'm mostly just kind of seeing how these act next week. So uh, let me know your thoughts on the market uh, down below. I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you guys in future videos. Take care.